We done got blessed with this new project from Elzai and Georgia and Muldrow, and I ain't gonna lie to you, this thing kinda tough. Now this thing come from two really talented artists, Elzai, has submitted himself as one of the best lyricists. His esteem as a lyricist spans all the way back to his days with the rap group Slum Village. He also has a really impressive catalog of solo albums, couple of them things, borderline classics. The album was produced completely by Georgia Ann Muldrow, who honestly I wasn't familiar with at all. But as soon as I looked her up, saw that afro, I knew what the deal was. She brought it here. Her sound is neo soul mixed with funk and jazz. And she also has this really unique knack of making the beat sound extra spacey and ethereal with her use of sims and other sounds. I mean, to sum everything up, man, it sounds like if aliens use cocoa butter, which is actually quite fitting because Elza leaves Earth. Start with this opening track, Amnesia, that has this funky piano-led instrumental. This thing is laced with some psychedelic synths as well. Georgia Ann's vocals sound like they were plucked straight out of the 80s, which is a dope aesthetic to me. Then my nigga Elzai. My nigga Elzai bring it. Not only is he a master with the rhyme patterns, but he has some of the slickest brags. The nigga's really just elegant at saying he's better than you. He got a bunch of high-level brags, with my favorite being We Lit Up Like Cleo on Set It Off, Tony and Scarface, or Alonzo and Training Day. The beat on the next song, Every Moment, is somewhat experimental. You can pick out these muddied horns and a subtle drum loop, but what really drives this beat are those, once again, abstract simps. I like Georgia Ann's vocals on this track, too. She provides a dreamy chorus, but I really enjoy how she sings the ad-libs on Elzai's verse. Elzai's lines here are so well-crafted and calculated. You could pick a bar at random and teach rap school on it. The lyrics here are so well put together. Take, for example, after he says, your whole perception of me I can take apart. He says, and put it back together. Won't have to practice ever. Will be a breeze like long sleeves and jacket weather. Where you got the four syllable rhyme schemes and then you got the end rhyme with the sleeves, breeze, and then you got a punch it tied up all nicely. That's rapping. Overall, Elzai delivers two solid verses over a dope, mellow instrumental. The instrumental in the song King Ish is tame compared to those first two tracks. But Elzai's rapping is relentless. It's one dynamic rhyme scheme after the other. And he out here punching, punching on this song. He opened up with a little jab. The who's hotter than the batter trap houses with a spun fan. Then he hit you with the overhand left when he said, Jay said, kill anything moving that don't play dead. I'll take you out the picture and glitch a JPEG. Come on, man, that's tough. But then he hit you with that Mike Tyson uppercut. He hit you with the little mink mink with the, uh, now who the goat fearing and roach smearing, the antidote serum. Me, me, me minus the throat clearing. Me, me, me. Come on, man. Don't make me have to pull out the vocals for y'all to get the bar. That line is straight gas. Now, from there, the album starts to take root in a conceptual sense with the song Understanding. Here Elzai raps about the grim environment that he grew up in in Detroit. He raps effortlessly, not just about those issues, but also the cyclical nature of them. And I also want to put emphasis on the effortless part because once again, man, he's pulling out three and four syllable rhyme schemes like it's nothing. And despite the content of the song, I will say it doesn't have a dark undertone to it, in part because the beat sounds triumphant, but also Elzai is really taking on this Zeitgeist persona where he's this voice of the voices where he's speaking up for members of his community. And that's the concept that takes root with these next few songs. The next song already gonna tackle this persona a little bit more head on as the raps here is still braggadocious, but it's laced with this spiritual and religious imagery all throughout both verses. Then the song Never TD is the I Love Black Women anthem. You know, Dr. Umar song, we're smiling right now. The song is good. The imagery on this song goes far beyond what I think most songs with this topic go into, which I think makes the song good. But consciousness aside, we still got some songs where Elzai just goes. Strangelands, OD. Somebody should have just told Elzai, enough's enough. He loses his mind on this song. You want to talk about lyrical acrobatics? He rapped through Hellfire, higher than a Taco Bell fryer. In a building next to Bell Tire, I excel higher than a Propel Flyer after lighting up an L prior to catch the Holy Ghost by a higher female choir. You want to talk about syllables? But he ain't just playing with the syllables. He had to punch your head off too. The nigga raps through dark nights like Christian Bell. Come on, man. We, we starting early. I can tell you how a mosh bird sound. Before battle rap, I watched niggas flip quarters. Then I heard rounds. 
Because, you know, in Battle Rap, you got Uncle Smack flipping the coin and then the niggas spit the rounds, which is an entendre for niggas was moving weight and shooting gun. Come on, man. That's a bar. That's a bar. What are we here for? Then I want Elzai drug test for what he did on the song Pros and Cons. So this is a conceptual song where most of the words in the first verse start with pros, so like promote, produce, provide. And then that second verse, all the words start with con, like conceited, consequence. It's an insanely good concept and the execution is flawless. Uh, I did find it hilarious that Genius felt the need to use bold font for all the pro words and the con words as if you could possibly listen to this song and not understand what he's doing. But anyway, song's sick. Love the creativity. And then it ends with this song, Compassion, where he raps about his sixth grade teacher who, you know, doubted him, but didn't just doubt him. He was also was hostile to the nigga. And honestly, else I should have just slapped the nigga. Or, or nigga red. I don't know if it was a girl or guy. Song probably would have turned out a little bit different, but... Anyway, dope storytelling. I will say this song didn't tie a neat bow on the album. Which I don't think is absolutely necessary, but I know some people, when they listen to a conceptual album, they care about stuff like that. But overall, man, this album does a lot of things really, really well. You got elite rapping. Elzai is top tier when it comes to rhyme schemes. The punch in here is great throughout. The production on this album is good. I think the vibe of these beats complement Elzai really well. Now, one of my two complaints is I did think that the beats on this thing were a little bit one-dimensional. You just felt like once you heard the first couple of tracks, you knew how the rest of the album was going to play out sonically. And then the only other complaint that I have for this album is by Elzai standards, I don't think this album was that boundary pushing, especially on a song-to-song -song basis. On his albums like The Preface or Lead Poison, I thought he had individual songs that has such creative concepts. See songs like Talking In My Sleep or Guessing Game, uh, Egocentric, 216s. You know, on this album, we have the song Pros and Cons, but I think if he had a few more songs that push the envelope like that song, I think this album could have been pushing classic or at least album of the year territory. But despite that, we still got a dope project, two extremely talented artists, dope rapping. Overall, I think this is a Gentleman's 8 at 775. You feel me? Go check this one out.